Hello everybody, welcome back to the channel. Now almost exactly a month is left before 2025 wraps up and 2026 starts with a bang. And if you have been following my channel, you know every year, at the end of every year, I do these sort of career roadmaps for the coming year to help people get into a particular industry, be it cloud security or AI security or GRC. So today I want to focus on the G, uh, like a GRC career roadmap 2026. I've made this one year ago and I thought it would be a good idea to just update it, take a look at what is changing and just give some tips. If you are interested in starting a career, a GRC career in 2026, then this is definitely the video for you. First of all, let's start with what is governance, risk and compliance. Why, what makes this such an attractive career for people within cybersecurity? What makes them want to start a career here? So GRC is basically a GRC professional. You're responsible for the frameworks, for governance, for IT compliance, basically assessing risks and implementing, you know, compliance controls, framework controls to protect the cyber security uh, like framework of the organization. You know, you need to understand policy procedures, risk management, regulatory standards, compliance roadmaps, risk registers. Your job is to make sure that the company's IT risk level is maintained at an acceptable level and that you're not in any non-compliance with any regulations or standards which are applicable to your industry. And what makes it like an attractive to a lot of people? Like what makes people choose uh, GRC. Well, first of all, the most simplest reason is GRC is very, very beginner friendly. It is not easy. I do not want to give you the wrong impression. GRC is not easy, but it is very, very beginner friendly and there's a lower bar to entry compared to say, you know, becoming like a cyber security analyst or like a penetration tester or vulnerability or red teamer where you need to have a very good technical background. For GRC, you can like transition into GRC for my non-technical background. I know people who are teachers. I know people who are accountants. And I know people who are lawyers and they transitioned into cybersecurity through uh, GRC. And the other reason is it's also quite high in demand. As AI becomes more and more popular, so many governance standards are coming up around AI. And companies need people who can guide them that, hey, we are going to be doing this stuff with regards to AI. Are we covered or not? So again, they, they, you have to have these skills, which I talked about. So this is the reason GRC becomes a very, very good uh, career pathway into cybersecurity for a lot of people. And is this just hype? So a lot of people do ask me, man, what's your evidence for this? Like, so I want to give you an example. This is a CIO playbook. This is like an AI investment report, which came out from Lenovo. And it's a really, I would recommend you checking it out also. So, and basically they talked about what are the uh, priorities for CIOs, you know, what are the areas they are focusing on for 2025 and beyond. And if you take a look at what are the strategic imperatives for CIOs, you know, this is IDC research. They surveyed over 3000 like senior executives within the IT industry. Like what are the things you are focusing on? And if you take a look at uh, this one, uh, number four, as you can see, I, I, AI governance and compliance, GRC underpins responsible and ethical use of AI. Because like I said, as companies are now gearing up with their generative AI, with their agentic AI strategic projects, they want people who can actually guide them on it. They don't want people who've memorized standards. They want people who are with them to guide them on these critical projects to make sure that they are a success. Now, what are the common mistakes that I see people when they get excited about GRC, they want to start a GRC career? A few common mistakes I see people making. Well, first of all is they think that getting a certification equals getting a job in GRC. So they just start doing certifications. I will do the CISM, CSSP, CRS, whatever, without a roadmap, without a proper guidance on what they have to do. Or they focus on the wrong skills. They think that you need to know red teaming, vulnerability assessments, or uh, like XYZ skill within cybersecurity. One guy like started doing Linux commands. I don't know what Linux commands have to do with GRC. But so these are the things that uh, they focus on the wrong skills, okay? One guy I know he was doing an L1 SOC analyst course because he wanted to go into GRC. One person I know he was doing a certified ethical hacker certification because he wanted to go into GRC, you follow me? So these are the sting mistakes I see people making without a proper roadmap. Or what they do is they start memorizing standards. They just download the ISO or the PCI DSS standard and they start memorizing it because they think that's what people are going to be asking them. Or 
they go into chat gpt and they say how do i become into how do i get into grc and they just start blindly following it without i'm not saying anything bad about chat gpt or any gen ai tool but you need to have a proper roadmap for to be like successful into your transition into grc so what is the right way to enter governance risk and compliance in 2026 so this is my roadmap which i would recommend like you start with this is of course 100 percent my subjective opinion you don't have to follow this or you can take some aspects for it and apply it to your own uh, environment but what are what is the way i would recommend somebody start a grc career in 2026 if you're starting from scratch completely okay the first step is to start with the regulations that matter there are certain regulations that are universal because governance risk and compliance is all about the standards right get a basic understanding of iso 27001 uh, pci dss gdpr iso is the global standard for information security any environment that is serious about security they will have some concept of iso there pci dss is mandatory for if you are accepting processing storing payment transactions gdpr if you have any privacy concerns gdpr will be there so these three start with these three do not memorize them just get a basic understanding of what they are how they work how to become compliant with them and then add the 2025 and 2026 transformers the new types of things which have come up the, the, there's the eu ai act right the art of ai type the nist cyber security framework which was recently updated Okay, with new types of requirements, understand that the NIST AI risk management framework, again, these are the things you want to focus on. So they start with the above three and then get an understanding of these three also. Because if you cover this, you will be covering a vast majority of questions that employers are interested or they will be asking you when it comes to starting a governance risk and compliance career. Now, when I say like master these regulations, I mean, get a basic understanding of them, understand where they are applicable to, what sort of companies have to be compliant when, what are the key provisions, right? And one very easy hack of doing this, because, you know, I'll be honest with you, standards are very boring. I mean, if you look at the PCID as a standard, you can't memorize it, right? You'll fall asleep. So the best way to do this is to through case studies. So find case studies about companies who have become ISO compliant or PCIDSS compliant. You will find hundreds and thousands of case studies on the internet. Find them and read through them because case studies will tell you practically how companies manage to implement these standards. Instead of just reading through a standard, which you'll never understand, you will see the problems that they faced. You'll see what are the approaches that they took and how they became compliant with a particular standard. So start like this, get a basic understanding of the standards and then go through uh, case studies to get a better feel for how it happened. And then once you have this, now look at the certifications which matter. If you are starting complete from scratch, you don't know a single thing about cyber security, the CompTIA Security Plus is a very good way of getting started. So that, that will help you and put like a good stamp on your CV. If you already have a good IT background, then the C-Risk is a bit like a better choice for you. Maybe you have three to five years of experience in IT. The C-Risk will teach you about risk management standards, how to create like a risk management program. And if you already have more than five years experience, then yeah, for sure, go jump into the CISSP and get that uh, on your profile. These three certifications do not guarantee you jobs. I'm not going to lie to you. There are millions and millions of people who already have these certifications, okay? But they are a good baseline because they will make sure that you get past the initial hiring filter. You know, a lot of companies, they already have, they download all the people who have applied and they just filter it out based on the certifications they have. I want you to get past that hiring filter, okay? So having these certifications do not guarantee, it doesn't matter, it does not guarantee you a job, but not having them will like really cause you problems. So please go right ahead and get these certifications. There's no harm in them and they will benefit you by at least making sure that you pass the initial hiring filters which are there. Now, number four, and this is a mistake I see so many people making in governance risk and compliance. This is easily the most common mistake. They do not develop their communication skills. And I honestly, this mistake can cost you so many jobs. You have to understand the whole point of governance risk and compliance is that you understand the standards and the risks, and then you communicate it to stakeholders, be it through presentations or through reports. You will be constantly looking at standards and then translating them into what it means for your particular company, right? You need to explain the risks to the CRO, the CIO, to the CTO in a way 
that they are able to understand and most of the time these are non-technical people you will be writing reports risk management reports audit reports presenting your findings if you are not able to communicate them in a way that they can understand your your you will never go far in grc so you have to develop your communication skills stand up in front of somebody and start rehearsing a lot of people tell me i feel shy well i tell them you will feel more shy in front of the ceo <laughs> instead of your friend or your family members or stand in front of the mirror and try to develop your skills in communicating take a problem like i always say, call it the grandmother test take a problem within grc and pretend you're explaining it to your grandmother who is completely non technical it, this will force you to like force you to talk in a way without any lingo without any jargon without any fancy words and explain it in the most simplest way possible so please do not bypass this step which is developing your communication skills and now number 5 is building practical experience so provided you've reached here now you can start applying for jobs 100% you do not have to wait for experience go on linkedin you know you have so many non profit or small companies that cannot afford a full time cyber security or a grc people I'll offer them your like grc skills tell them i'm happy to do like a iso 27001 check or a pci dss gap analysis you know that you have like non profits early stage startups who are just starting out small shops local businesses community groups all of them most of the time they are completely happy to ha have you come and do tell them you'll just do a 60 minute check like a 60 minute meeting with them and then give them a report in return for a testimonial you can just tell them that what did, what did you feel about my services so you get that on linkedin you get that on your profile so this is a very very easy way of going about it go on linkedin and start searching for them in addition to that you one thing which i see a lot of people missing out on start posting on linkedin right start posting on linkedin sharing your advice sharing your um, Uh, knowledge about the governance risk and compliance go on events you can publish articles in cio magazine or isaka journal uh, this will position you as a contributor to grc instead of somebody who's just learning and one free hack which i can tell you is make a checklist like a iso 27001 checklist or a eoai act and share it for free on linkedin hey say hey i have just made this checklist for free if anybody wants to download it you know what will happen is people who are in governance risk and compliance they will reach out to you they say thank you i have found this checklist very useful and that might become like a conversation starting point for you this will this will set you apart from a lot of people who are there already in governance risk and compliance right so instead of waiting for somebody to come to you and you showing your work you already showing your work before anybody asks for it just create a free checklist put it on gumroad put it on notion google drive whatever is easy for you and just Uh, like uh, tell them that uh, share it once a week okay share a new checklist every week i like i'll give you an example this is something i made in like a uh, notion you know for the eu ai act like what are the high risk ai checklist what is the prohibited ai checklist what are the things that you have to think about you can make a similar one like this put it on uh, like uh, linkedin and then see the responses that come you this will show you as somebody who's giving back to the industry already and you will see people reaching out to you this will give you credentials within the industry do not uh, one very important tip please do not just put it on chat gpt and copy paste from there actually contribute to it make it something which is valuable to the industry make it professional looking do not make it look very amateurish because that will give you like a people a bad impression about your skills okay so th this is the way i would recommend how you go into grc and what are the trends in uh, 2026 and beyond well for something you cannot ignore no matter how badly you try it which is ai governance and model risk the eu ai act it is still coming into force in 2026 you have the nist ai risk management framework you have things like agentic ai becoming more and more popular which is forcing companies to look at how to make sure that they remain within like acceptable risk parameters right so you cannot ignore them the other thing is grc engineering as environments are becoming more and more faster because of ai because of the cloud people do not have time to wait around for like you know somebody to come in and do a, like give them a 500 page checklist they want controls to be automated they want controls to be as seamless as possible which is the concept of grc engineering where you're thinking like an engineer right do not have you don't have to jump into this straight from the start but please be aware of these trends which are changing the industry and so this is basically like the roadmap i would give you if you still want to like dive deep into other aspects i have a grc engineering master class 
on this topic don't like don't take this if you don't know anything about GRC this is more for people who have like a basic understanding of GRC but they want to augment their skills and get a good understanding a professional understanding of GRC engineering also so that's wrapping this video up I hope you get a better idea now please do like and subscribe to this channel and share this video to anybody who you think might find it useful thank you very much and I'll see you in the next video